2 to Web3, Transition and Merging Businesses. The topic for today, as you can see, is uh, Web2 to Web3, Transition and uh, Merging of Businesses. Uh, a bit about myself, I run a gaming uh, and a blockchain studio back in India. And we have an amazing set of panelists here who have made amazing transitions themselves from the Web2 to the Web3 industry. So uh, without talking much about it, I would like directly like to jump to Tim and Jack. Maybe let's start by your own journey. You both come from traditional Web2 industries. Jack, you have been a pilot. You're in the aviation sector. Tim, yourself in the property business. You are taking care of the booking business, uh, booking.com business for Vietnam. And now you have a Web3 platform. So what triggered your transition? So maybe share about what do you do now and why the shift for yourself? Check, we'll have to start with you. Okay, I'll start. Uh, hi, I'm Chaska. So I am the founder of uh, Philippine Blockchain League and I'm also uh, the vice president, founding vice president of uh, Blockchain Council of the Philippines. And yeah, as you mentioned, I'm a pilot by profession. Um, I was in the aviation industry for 10 years, but due to the pandemic, I lost my job. I, almost all pilots lost their job. And I actually earned from crypto. That was the start. I, I learned about it, lear um, earned from it. And uh, during that time, I went into conferences, stayed in Dubai for a month, Singapore, um, Malaysia, just immersed myself in the blockchain world because I fell in love with it. I don't know why, but I, I know there's something there, right? Um, and then when I went to this place, as I said, how will I use all my connections to, to, to bring them to the Philippines and to give jobs and opportunities? And I think it's more of, for me now, it's a calling. It's more of a calling that, you know, it gives uh, people the opportunity to see that there's a whole new world out there. It's not just the Web2 space. It's not like me, I've been in the aviation. If I didn't come into crypto, I would probably be in the, the aviation for whole my, whole my life. So yeah, that was the transition and I, I guess I'm still here. I am not yet back in the airline. So I think I'm doing a great, I'm doing a great having a great time here. Absolutely. Thank you, Trek. Tim, if I can request you to uh, talk a little bit about your journey and what caused the shift because you are in the same sector, but now in the Web3 space about the whole prop tech business. Please, we'd love to know about you. Uh, I think it's all started from uh, when COVID hits, right? And, and you know, as when COVID hits, uh, the travel industry is, you know, extremely severe. It's everywhere in the world, and, you know, including big company like Booking.com, right? Um, so I, I feel like, you know, I wanted to, uh, to really like help my uh, hotel friends because when you are in Booking.com as, as a country manager, your partners are the hotel owners. But Booking.com itself alone, you know, could not help because, you know, themselves were cutting costs and revenue decreased to, you know, huge amount. So I wanted to start my own company to actually, you know, helping going through these uh, the difficult time and then grow. So I did start my own company. And during that time, you know, up to now, I think it's about three years, I have learned that there need to be a new solution and new wave of customers uh, market segment as well as the new experience as well. So, you know, going through that, I think that the web tool always there, you know, it's, it's a strong foundation. But then there's always need to apply new technology, uh, you know, with the new layers of coolness so that, you know, it will be updated with the trend and it will be, I think, more beneficial for the business. That's how I started. So my new business now, even though it's Web3, it's called Stainex. Uh, it's still in the industry. We are technically an OTA, but it's a combination of online travel agents. So similar to Airbnb, Booking.com. But then it's also a, a plus of experience. So you got a new way of experience plus the Web3 experience. So now people can actually, you know, booking the room, booking the trip, enjoying the ticket for the Arsenal football clubs, all that kind of things all together through an NFT package and pay by cryptos, but also pay by a normal fiat money. So, you know, that's a transition. Very interesting. And that's a very good point that you touched upon and uh, would love to pick your brains there. Now, when this whole transition is happening, one standard question that comes from consumers is, why should we care, right? Um, the users are having a good experience in the standalone platforms in the Web2 world, right? 
which, which exists already, right? So when you go and talk to them about, hey, NFTs, cryptos, blockchains, what is the value addition that is coming up there, right? And I'm, I am a big optimist, I'm a big proponent, but I'm sure like you can talk much more about it for the audience here. What is it new? What is the extra? What is the value addition that the users get when they make the shift to the Web3 side of things? In, let's, take, let's take to the same industry that you had, uh, talked about to explain that a little bit more. It's very interesting because technically we are sitting here, you know, with all the Web3 cryptos people. But the reality is, to some extent, we are minorities in the whole big world, right? So explaining about Web3s and how integrations and all this could be positive and negative at the same time. It depends on how you look at it and how you use it, right? So for us, you know, our strategy is that we keep the Web2 experience but we add on top and sharing people the benefit of Web3 in a very simple way to understand. Because you know, if you talk about Web3 and blockchain, there's so many things and some standards like transparencies, uh, securities, and all these things, they would not understand. So it make it very simple. So uh, for me, I had, I'm a platform. So I have the partner, which is the hotels, and I have the bookers, which is the clients, right? So I had a talk with both of the worlds. So the hotels and you know the hotel industry, they are not that simple, right? So when I talk to them, you know, I explain to them, hey, this is where you're going to get a new wave of customers. And that's exactly what they like. And somehow I can give them the new markets, new way of customer, and that's what they want. And for the bookers, you know, I can tell them, hey, look, now you're going to have a lot more fun. You're going to have communities, you're going to have metaverse, you're going to have gamifications. The loyalty program from hotels and from uh, OTA platform is cooler than ever, right? But you keep everything else the same. So you got your same benefit, but a lot more extra. It's up to you to enjoy it or not. Yeah, that, that's an amazing thing because uh, uh, if you have to summarize what extra do you get when you go to Web3 is you get what you were already getting in the Web2 world plus much more. Right? You get to participate in a lot of other activities. You become a co-owner uh, of things. And Cech, I would like to come to you on this. Like, you are active in multiple industries now. Uh, fashion, you do events. You are the founder of uh, Philippines Blockchain Week. And you are doing a tremendous job in bringing all of this together to create value. Maybe if you want to talk a little bit about that, how do you do that? And I'm sure you are interacting with a lot of clients when you're doing this. So you must be getting a lot of questions around these things. How do you address it? Definitely. I mean, uh, I'll give you a sample. So in my event, I, I will actually bring the world-renowned fashion designer, uh, Michael Cinco. He's a Filipino, but he's been dressing the royalties, um, Lady Gaga, Beyonce, etc. Name it. The less celebrities, right? Um, he, was the, he, what, he asked me, like, why should I be there? And it's, I, I told him about how he can be here and how he, it can protect. So that's my word. It can protect your your gowns, maybe. Like, you know, you have, for example, the watches, jewelries, gowns that you have, you will know that it is legitimate, that you can have a digital counterpart and you can tell them that, hey, this is an original version because there can be a lot of fakes, right? But, you know, I think it's the protection that they are looking into. Uh, um, also, we are actually partnered with Department of Trade and Industry, for example. They will be doing a creative summit so basically, they're bringing 74 of their um, industries. Uh, may it be in uh, toys, fashion, um, drawing, paintings, and everything. They'll be bringing it um, and partnering with us to prove that blockchain is needed in those industries. And we will prove that through use cases. And I, I think that's what, you know, what others are actually looking into. It's actually the use cases. Um, if you don't show them something, then they won't... They won't um, actually believe it. Uh, I think another one is uh, there's also our partnership with Philippine Airlines. So it's, um, it's a, an airline meets blockchain. So they're the first um, airline that has the NFT in the Philippines. And it's the same, Mabuhay Miles. They've been doing it for years. But, you know, I mean, if you have that Mabuhay Miles and you add more value to it, and you're also in the blockchain, you would know that this is a legitimate card. You can, you can falsify it and everything. So basically, it's just adding value to whatever they already have. You won't actually change anything. You will just add value to it. So that's my Absolutely. explanation to them. Right. And uh, one thing that I picked up very carefully from 
this conversation from both of you is one is the security aspect, ownership, and the use cases, right? And I would like to specifically come back on all those three points. But before that, just to add more context to it, the importance of education, because it is a new sector, because we are looking at a lot of new use cases, there is a requirement of educating the users as well. So Tim, starting with you, because from the hotel industry, right? Today, if people are used to going to booking.com and booking their rooms, you come in and you say, hey, by booking it as an NFT, you get a much more, uh, right? Yeah. But you have to make them comfortable to trust that yes, getting this much more is gonna be an add-on and not a replacement of what I was doing earlier. So how do you achieve that? How do you make sure that the users are really comfortable adopting to this new technology, which has, of course, tremendous benefits, but how do you tackle the user comfort there? So I think, uh, I think as everyone's sharing, you know, it's for Web3, it's added value. So that means, when, when you ask me that question, you know, when we talk to the user, it's not about replacing the Web2. You know, it's not the minority case kind of replacing the, the big armies here. It's more about what do you offer to the people, right? So, you know, learning from the experience, um, I, I think that we all agree here that you would want a cheaper rate, that's for sure, right? And you also want, uh, you know, an experience, an extreme that comes with it. So we believe in that. So we believe that we can bring you a more, you know, a cooler experience. And we have a product called um, a timeshare product. You know, you're familiar with timeshare, right? With Stay Next, you can actually book your vacation 10 years or 3 years ahead of time with a very great discount online immediately. And whenever you want to use it, you can redeem it. Right? And it's actually packed with these experience like, you know, we are official partner with Arsenal Football Club. And, you know, a lot more company that, you know, people know about in the Web2 industry. So it's, uh, it's already, you know, merged in, you know, so there's no difference, but a lot more experience. So the product itself needs to be more attractive, in my opinion, right, to the, you know, interest group, right? So it's not about Web 2 or Web 3. And then the Web 3 will have, for the specific business, I, I think that payment, much better. You know, adding more payments uh, options, you know, uh, faster, and also, it's a way for people to liquidate, right? So that's just, you know, more customer. And this is interesting. I think that based on our research, the Web3 people spend a lot more. Who doesn't like that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, interesting. So, Czech, coming to you, in your experience of dealing with various clients, if you have to uh, highlight, like, the biggest sectors or the use cases which are picking up pace faster, than others, where the adoption is increasing a lot more. Like, of course, the hotel industry is one. What more do you see as, as the trends that, uh, that are picking up pace much faster? And uh, what do you advise them when they make this transition? What is it the most fundamental thing that they have to be considerate about? Okay, now you're switching to Web3. Make sure you have all these boxes ticked. That's kind of hard to say what should be the boxes thick because I actually entered Web3 without knowing any boxes. So that would probably be a hard question. But I think it's the right education first. Even if you don't have that, you know, college degree for, for whatever blockchain that is, um, you need to at least, you know, research. There's Google out there, you know, you can research anything. I think it's really education because you cannot go into something without knowing what it is. And, uh, you know, you would prevent whatever scams, whatever um, problems that, you may, that may arise. And you don't want to learn it the hard way, right? You want to learn um, this, uh, this technology in a good way. And you also uh, no, um, look for people who are already there, who, uh, who are already uh, doing it and um, has been there for quite some time. And they will actually lead you. You connect with the right people. That's the number one. You connect with the right people, yeah. Um, I think that's the only thing that you need to do in the first, uh, the, as first step. Because if you correct the right people, you, you know what to do, you know what, what next step you would take. And having all of these use cases is just a bonus for them to know, oh, the, this is legitimate, you know. But at the end of the day, you really need to uh, know what you're doing, learn what, you, what you're getting into, and I think that's it. 
Yeah, yeah. Thank you for that. And Tim, coming back to you, how important do you think is collaborations and partnerships in uh, when you are entering this space? Uh, because there's much more. The plus plus that we offer to the users currently, that becomes much more enhanced if you are partnered up with some other vendors, other players, other builders in this industry. So do you want to talk a little bit more about that and highlight the importance of this specific thing uh, when any company, any user, you any product the is entering? partner in Web3? Or? Yeah, yeah. Well, in my opinion, you know, having a great partnership is important no matter what, in anything in life, right? In persons, you know, personal relationships, working relationship, and normal company relationship, and Web3 relationship. But I think for Web3, it's even more important and actually easier because I think we were built, you know, came from that. We came from community base, we came from partnerships, and things are much faster, and, you know, in my own experience. So I think that that is great opportunity that no business should miss, definitely. Because, you know, it's always better if you do business with your groups of partners, you know, because you cannot, you know, one of yourself doing everything, right? So with great partners, you know, that, that fit in with your business, much better experience for the customer and for yourself and for the company, for society as well. Right, right. And uh, the biggest gray area or the biggest question mark that uh, sometimes uh, troubles the Web3 industry is the regulatory aspects to it. So uh, what's your take on that? Number one is in the specific industries that you're operating in, how are you seeing the regulatory, uh, uh, the regulators progressing, understanding? To give a little bit of background, in India, like uh, um, I'm working with the government very closely, and we have seen the maturity coming in in the last two years. Now they are open to dialogues, they understand things, and they are supporting the businesses, so it's growing up. And because of that, the adoption is going up much more. Now if we go to any client and say, hey, let's transition, these are the pluses that we can offer, because the regulators are becoming more friendly, that opens up doors to exponentially grow what you want to do. So in your experience, how are you seeing the regulatory landscape in the sector that you're operating in, and especially with the clients that you, uh, that you work with? And how does it help or does not help in the potential that it holds? Check if we can start with you. Um, I think it really is important to partner with the government. Um, as for, for example, the Blockchain Council of the Philippines, we're partnered with the Department of uh, Information, Communications, Technology, SEC, um, and uh, all of this government body that you that you need in the Philippines, technically. So having all of this, even I told you the Department of Trade and Industry, having all of this even in a creative way, you know, they would, look, they would see it as, oh, this is not scary. I think this is legitimate because uh, the government is working with them, you know, um, and at, at least there's, there's this um, thin line between you going into Web3 and at least r removing that thin line for them, if there's a government body um, and regulator that's um, included in the conversation. And it really is a game changer, basically. It's a game changer having all of this um, government officials um, supporting all of us. Uh, and at the same time, I guess, if you work with the government, you would also know if something is, you know, um, sketchy <laughs> or you, you would know you would have that access to checking everything if uh, it's legitimate and i think it all boils down to legitimacy yeah. tim your thoughts please oh, i i really like how you say adoption because that's what i we believe in as well right it's not replacement so i think just like what she said right I, we are you know very serious about compliance and the only problem is sometimes there is no compliance to follow you know, because, you know, there's no rules. So we would try our best, you know, to get licensed or to follow regulators on every single topic that we do. One of the reasons is, you know, we are still in the normal business, which is where too. So all of our supply, which is the hotels and the clients, and the, you know, including Web 2 and Web 3. So we need to make sure that we are follow every single rules in every country. And for us, you know, applying Web 3 is a new way of new experience for everyone to adapt, right? So whatever that we need to get, you know, the license, the following uh, regulators, meeting up with the government, country, blockchain association, we follow it all. So th that's our direction. And I think that works because, we, you know, like you said, we get updated on the direction. But so far, I see a lot of positive, 
you know, in a lot of countries these days, as you know, right? Thank you. Thank you for that. Now, uh, my last question, and Olga, we are on time, uh, is, yeah? Okay. So, uh, in, the, uh, in the panel before this, we, uh, we heard one of the panelists talking about, hey, we are far from, we are very early on uh, in, in our journey. I agree and disagree to that. Uh, because of the in the last two years itself, the kind of uh, progression that we have been able to see, I agree it's complete. It's pretty early on, but at the same time, the way this this the sector is growing, that's that's tremendous, right? So uh, for any new business that we venture into, there's always a short term uh, outlook that we have that okay, in the near term, this is what we're going to achieve, and a long term vision. What? How do you see the transition of the web two businesses to web three in the near term? And as well as, what's your long-term vision towards it? How do you see, let's say, five years down the line, the businesses operating in the particular sectors that you are expertise in, um, how do you see that shaping up? And how will it be much different from where we are today? Check. I think it really depends on what industry. On the gaming side, um, it's really, the Philippines is really known for the gaming. So uh, for those who doesn't know, it's uh, the web the Philippines is actually the tech capital of uh, the world before, and then it became the social media capital of the world. And now um, we are aiming to be the blockchain um, capital of Asia, or at least the, the way to Asia, right? And I think this, um, this is really helpful in terms of the adoption, adoption rate. Um, the gaming side is actually a good penetration to, to Web3 because you do not know that you're even using Web3, right? And you're still playing, and it's just there. You don't know that it's there. Um, but I, I guess for all the businesses outside of gaming, it's a little far from, in reality, it's a little far from that. Uh, you cannot expect them to, to be onboarded when they don't even know what blockchain means and when they don't even know what Web3 means. And I think it still boils down to education. So I guess when there's more uh, educational platforms or at least even podcasts or shows that, that explains these things to normal people who doesn't know about anything about it, then the adoption rate will actually go faster. But in the Philippines, we are a tech capital. We're very techy. And so, yeah, I think it's quite the adoption here is, as you can see, AIBC here. <laughs> so we are uh, very, we adapt very easily. Amazing. Tim? Oh, I think technology is very scary. And the reason why I think it's scary because the adoption of technology is very fast. Yeah. You know, um, so I mean, I know a lot of numbers on my industry, so I can share with you a little bit. Uh, it's the hospitality industry, you know, the hotel we call hospitality. So before COVID, right, I think it's uh, average, the people of using the OTA, what that mean online to book your hotel, let's say average about like maybe 50 to 55%. And you know what happened, uh, happened after two years of COVID, right? Everybody stay home and everybody goes online. So the number of people are using the internet to book online hotels now, growing fast about 10 years, considering it technically two years. That's the real data. I can't remember exactly the source. I think Baker McKenzie or something like that. But it's going to be it was that fast just for the adoption of online bookings. So, you know, you know, with something like blockchain, Web3, you never know, right? So it's a positive thing, right? I, you know, I always believe that it's going to be part of life. So that's why we are all in this, right? So that question is going to be that fast, man. It's faster than ever that you can ever expect it. So that's why you always should be prepared and be the transition and, and helping that option. Great. Thank you so much, Tim. Thank you, Chek. Uh, any, any questions from the audience here? Uh, yeah, sure. Yeah, so we see companies adopting a hybrid approach to Web3. Rather than jumping to Web3, there's a new concept which is emerging, which is the Web 2.5. So any thoughts around that? Can you repeat the question again? I'm saying we see... Yeah. Okay. So we see companies, uh, rather than transitioning directly from Web2 to Web3, they're meeting in the middle and uh, uh, adopting a hybrid approach. 
still calling it the next web 2.5 where traditional companies with legacy systems are adopting new technologies in a closed format and only for specific use cases. So any thoughts around the web 2.5 uh, in the middle uh, of web 2 and web 3? Uh, I, I think that, let me answer that question first, okay? So I think that questions go directly to what we are doing right now. So we are in, uh, you know, travel booking business, like online hotel bookings. And we're facing exactly that problems where we need to build the technology based on Web 3, but we need to have the user interface and the experience Web 2 base. And, you know, get people used to with connecting wallets. And so for us, I think we exactly at the Web 2.5. And uh, there's still a lot of questions regarding to which blockchains and how, which uh, coding, you know, languages that we should be choosing. Uh, it's actually a very interesting problem, but uh, I actually like it a lot because, you know, to us, I think it's no longer Web 2 and Web 3 anymore because people want the same things, right? You know, people still want the product, people still want to travel, and people want to, uh, you know, have a better way for the payments. And whether it's crypto now or could be something else later, whether it's an NFT now or something else will be called later. So we believe that applying whatever most updated technology to fit in with the trend, fit in with the demand, is what we're going to do. But making sure that the product is meet with the customer expectations. Uh, I also don't think that you know, Web3 can just stand alone. We need Web2.5. Basically, I'll give you a sample. So um, we have our tickets, right? For example, our tickets for Sigma. Instead of just selling it as an NFT, we still have that option to buy as a normal fiat credit card, etc. Because not everyone, you cannot ask everyone to go into NFTs, into the blockchain world. And so I think this is where the 2.5 is very much needed. And you will need it forever. Uh, there's no such thing as Web3 for me. Uh, purely Web3. So you need something in the real world. Technically, just anything digital, anything in the real world. So that's where you draw that line. And uh, there's also, like for example, a VC startup matchmaking that we're doing. It's a Web2 um, show, but then there's still Web3 companies there. So basically, you, you just can't uh, do... Uh, you can do Web2 alone, but not Web3 alone. It's still Web2.5 in reality. So, so I can explain a little bit regarding technology. So, you know, uh, in hotel business, we have something called a channel managers. It's a software to connect all these cell channels, right? So when we're taking the room from hotels, we use the software to go into the property management system to get the room. But then, we do that in a Web2 base. After we get the room inventory, we start to mint it in the NFT. So it's a process that both Web2 and Web3 through the API connections. So, you know, that is something like Web2.5, right? Not completely Web3. Yeah, so it's not like an entire shift. It's you're picking up the elements where you can add a lot of value and using Web3 for that while sticking to the roots where you don't need to make the shift, right? Great. Thank you so much, Jake. Thank you, Tim, for your amazing insights. It was a pleasure interacting with you. And uh, please reach out. Our panelists are going to be around. If you want to connect with them, they have amazing insights to share with you. They're very active on LinkedIn and their social media. Please connect with them. And once again, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Olga. Thank you, thank you guys. Thank you.